Good morning. Good morning. I'm gonna start singing opera for you guys. Good. What's that? What's that guy from Pitch Perfect? Which song part did he sing? I want you to wait. Wait, what's the lyric? You know what I'm saying? Like, opera guy from Pitch Perfect when they're singing since you've been gone. I get what I want. That's gonna be me. <laughs> this morning is the opera guy from from Pitch Perfect. Um, I'm sorry that I didn't have an episode for you guys last week, but I was sick again. Um, second time I've been sick in October, so it's not very Christian Girl Autumn of the universe to do that to me. <laughs> um... But, you know, we're, we're working with what we got. Um, it's my first time using my ring light for its intended purposes today. Um, because it's dark outside because it's pouring rain. Um, so I'm using my ring light. It lo kind of looks like I'm, I'm like, filming, like, a spooky, telling a spooky, scary story. Um, like, around a campfire or something. That's what it looks like I'm, I'm filming. Um, but that's okay. Um, I wanted a London Fog so bad today, guys. <laughs> sorry um excuse me i wanted a london fog so bad because okay i've been i've been on a little bit of a london fog kick recently um like i got one when i was in niagara falls or somewhere in, in ontario when i went on my trip um and like ever since then i've literally been obsessed like i haven't been drinking coffee as much i've been literally drinking like two london fogs per day so i wanted to go get one but i sold my car because i'm moving and it's pouring rain outside and I don't want to walk in the rain because I don't have an umbrella. So, so F-U-C-K to all of you guys. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but it's okay. We, we got a dark roast coffee with butter pecan creamer. The huge. Um, I'm not normally a dark roast girly and this is kind of gross and bitter. But it's okay because that's all we had. So... When the light, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. <laughs> and you know, you guys know that saying? <laughs> Do you guys know the most famous saying in the world, probably? Um, but yeah, so I'm still sick, so I'm sorry if I sound a little bit nasally. Um, I'm sorry if I, if I do a little cough, cough here and there. Um, I'm pretty sure this is like my annual getting, um, bronchitis. Because like, I, once a year... I get like real I get sick but it's like um like I have like the worst cough in the world like it's so bad and it's so like gross um but once a year that happens to me um and this was that this was that time so that sickness I had a really bad cough um and I couldn't go home sick for work because I literally like just went on a trip and then I come back and I'm like calling it sick like no also I have amazing news for you guys I got a job in Canmore so I'm moving um but yeah I'm moving um November 13th I leave my house November 13th is a Sunday and then I'm going to um, Canmore and then I'm staying in like a random like hotel or like whatever. I'm staying somewhere for a night. And then the 14th I move in to my room. And then the 15th I start my new job. And I'm just doing like housekeeping um, for for um, one of the hotels in Canmore. Um, which I'm actually like weirdly excited about. Like at first when, when like... My family members were like, oh, you should, like, do housekeeping. I was like, no, I don't want to clean. But, like, I'm actually kind of excited to, to do housekeeping. You know, I just pop my little AirPods in. I'm just cleaning. I get to be in my own world. Uh, I'm going to learn how to do towel art so that I can make hella tips from rich people that come and stay. Um, so I'll be able to make, like, swans with towels on their beds and stuff. So I'm pretty pumped about that, honestly. But I'm so excited to just go out there. Neva got a job too. She's going out a week before me. She goes out on like the 7th I think. Um, but it's just like crazy. I just wanted this episode to kind of be like. Um, you know about like anxieties. With like new beginnings. And 
you know, moving and just, like, how I've been handling it, um, and, um, everything, because it, it's a little bit overwhelming, me, I will admit, um, because it's, like, it's just, like, crazy that, you know, it's, like, life is actually, like, happening for me, you know? Like, before, it was, like, Oh, haha, I'm, I'm moving to Banff. Oh, oh yeah, I'm gonna go to Kenmore for a little bit. And it, like, wasn't, like, a real thing, you know? But now that it's, like, set in stone and, like, I have a job and I sold my car and I'm, like, on my last week of work this week and, like, you know, it's just, like, everything's happening and it's, like, it doesn't feel real. Like, it literally doesn't feel like it's happening. Like, I'm, like, this is insane. Like, I'm gonna be gone in, like, two weeks. And I'm just like, it's crazy, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I, I just wanted, wanted to talk about it. So um, when I first found out that I like was for sure 100% got the job, I was like so over the moon happy, you guys. And like, of course, right? Because it was like, I had, I was getting a little bit nervous because I didn't have, um, like I didn't have uh, like a job. So I was like, stressing out because I was like oh I'm gonna be done at my first job and like not have somewhere else to start you know so I was just like happy from that and then like um I don't know then I like started making a list of everything that I need to do before I was moving and then I was like oh my god this is so many things you know like I had so many things to do even like still I have so many things that I have to like get done like I had to go to like the eye doctor and get new glasses because my glasses are bad and my eyesight's getting worse. <laughs> I have to like order my contacts. I went to Walmart and I got like a big ass suitcase because I didn't have one to take all my shit with me. Um, you know, I have to get, I still have to get like my passport done. I just like, cause I want to get everything like up to date before I go. Um, cause I don't know like what's in store for me after I am done in Kenmore or in Banff, you know? Anyway, so then I started to get really overwhelmed, and I was, like, having a little mental breakdown, you know, as people normally do, um, because I was like, oh, this is just, like, so much. Like, am I ready for this? Am I actually ready for this? And then when I started questioning that, I was like, I am, Leah, are you stupid? Are you a little stupid little girl? And I think that, you know, when you're, like, because I think that most of the people listening to this are going to, like, somewhat relate to me and, like sense of like you know adulthood and like going into it but I don't know I don't think I'm necessarily ready to go and be completely on my own but I feel like I'm never going to be actually ready like I'm you know it's like are you ever really ready for things that life throws at you real no you guys (laughs) (coughs) sorry Um, but for real, like, I don't think I'm ever going to be, like, 100%, like, ready, prepared, you know, to move. But I honestly feel like that's, that's okay. Because it's like, you don't have to constantly be, you know, prepared for everything. And, like, you won't be, you know. Um, because I was, like, so stressed. I was like, oh, like, what if I, like, don't have this? Or what if I don't have that? Blah, blah, blah. I was just, like, because my brain is, like, very, like, I self-sabotage a lot. So, like, I, um, like, I just, like, get in my own head and then I, like, think about different things and I'm, like, oh, this could go wrong, this could go wrong, this could go wrong. But I need to be less like that because now, after my little mental little breakdown that I had a couple days ago, I'm, like, fresh-minded, you know, I'm, I'm ready to take on the world. Um, also because... I think that, like, I'm not going to be completely on my own. Like, I have a roommate, you know, like, in the staff accommodations. And it, like, automatically comes off my paycheck. So, it's not like I'm, like, necessarily paying rent. Like, I am. But it's, like, I don't have to do anything. So, the money that I get is, like, completely disposable income that I just have to buy for, like, food and, like, other things. So, it's, like, it'll teach me, you know, what it's like to be on my own. What it's like to live on, you know, like, live without my parents and stuff. But it's not like I'm, like, completely alone, you know? And I think that that by going to Canmore or going to Banff, whatever, it'll, like, teach me so that I can go and, like, live somewhere else. Like, I really want to go to Montreal. Or, like, I just want to go, like, traveling and, like, Europe and stuff. So, like, 
maybe that's what I'll do next. This is kind of cool because you guys get like a little, um, you guys get to like watch me, watch me grow as an adult on the podcast. I'm like documenting my, my little journey. I guess that's with every single podcast. <laughs> like I'm not special. Um, just kidding. I am. So that's all I got to say. <laughs> that's all I got to say. So bye guys. I hope you have a good morning. <laughs> it's like a 10 minute podcast episode. But, um, anyway, yeah, and then, um, I told my dad that I got a job and that I was moving, and then he called me, and he was so happy for me. Like, all my parents have been, like, really happy. Anyway, it was, like, nice because I'm closer to my dad, so my dad told me that, like, if there's ever, like, a concert or something in, like, Calgary, like, we could easily go together. Anyway, that also made me really happy. And then, after I got off the phone... I was like so overwhelmed with like with jubilee <laughs> um and then I cried but it was it wasn't like an overwhelmed stress cry it was like a good happy happy tears I'm happy with the way that my life is going now um happy tears but I think that it's like you get like scared every time you start something new you know like every time I, I start a new job like first day is like the scariest day of my life you know what I'm saying it's like, I don't know what, like, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know, like, anyone there. You know, it's it's scary. But then, after, like, a couple of weeks, after, like, a month or so, you, you get in the groove of things, you get settled, and everything's fine. You know, and you're like, why was, well, what was I so nervous about in the first place? I think that that's how I have to, have to approach this. Um, and I think that, like, I don't know, I feel like people underestimate how easy it is to to like do something like this at our age like obviously if you have like kids or like a marriage like you know you kind of gotta like think about them for too but <laughs> as a single 18 year old for me with no kids um I think I don't know I'm just like I'm, I'm I'm glad that this is the direction that my life is going in um I'm excited for what has for what what is in store for me you know it's crazy like billions and millions of years ago the big bounce reoccurred and here I am again, you know. Do you guys know about the big bounce? Um, I'm going to tell you guys the big bounce because I told one of my coworkers it. She asked me like if I was religious and then if I was a big bang theory believer and I said no, I'm a big bounce theory believer. And she was like, what the fuck is that? So I'm going to explain to you guys so that you guys don't think I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> so, um... We're going to take a little <laughs> a little detour off of the the path that we were talking about, but I'm going to I'm going to explain to you guys how I think the universe was created. So basically like you know, from the ages of like I don't even know 8 to like probably 12, I was like brainwashed to be Christian. We all know that story and then I went to the Christian camp that had an exorcism there. No big deal, you know. <laughs> um but anyway, so, after that, then I was like, okay, well, what do I believe in now? How do I think the universe create was created? And, like, I never really was, like, firm on the Big Bang because, like, there's so many unanswered questions. Like, that's, like, the thing with, like, all, I guess, like, beliefs is that there's just lots of questions about it. But, um, for me, it was, like, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, agree, I don't, like, think about the Big Bang because, like, um... It, like, doesn't explain what happened before it happened. doesn't explain, like, what triggered, you know, the explosion that created the universe. It doesn't, like, tell you all these things or, like, it doesn't tell you, like, what's going to happen after. Like, is the universe just going to grow forever and, like, expand forever? Like, into what? You know what I'm saying? So that was, like, the problem that I had with um, the Big Bang. And then a little while ago, I came across um, this, like, post or something, and it mentioned this thing called the big bounce um and one thing about me is that i absolutely love space you guys i love theories about how the universe was created i love planets i love constellations i love astronomy you know i just like i like learning about them you know supernovas star life cycle i just like i like learning about space you know i think it's cool and i eat that shit up so every time i i see something that's like related to like a a theory about space or something um I read it 
And anyway, so a little while ago, I came across this post and it talked about the big bounce and I was writing about it. And, um, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Um, yeah. So it just like makes more sense to me. So let me explain it to you guys. So basically, um, you know, it's sort of like related to the big bang. Like it, it basically is, but like, okay. So the universe is like the universe, boom, an explosion happens. The universe is growing, growing, growing. But when it reaches like a certain point of growth, the gravity, like the gravitational pull of the universe causes the universe to like collapse on itself. So then it starts to shrink, right? And then eventually like it's contracting, it's contracting, it's getting smaller, it's getting smaller, which is also known as the big crunch. Um, and then like when this, when the universe like gets to like almost nothing, then boom, another explosion happens and like, it just like keeps like bouncing back, um, pretty much. And I just think that that's like a more plausible theory because it kind of like, it, it makes sense why like, like, it, I don't know how to like phrase my thoughts because I'm bad at explaining things, but I'm bad at explaining things. Yep. <laughs> um, but it's basically like um, this like loop of like the universe getting smaller and then getting bigger and then getting smaller. And this is like gone forever and forever and forever and forever, forever. You know what I'm saying? And that just makes more sense to me because it like explains more. Like there's less like questions to be asked, I guess. Um, and then there's also like a sub theory with the big bounce and basically like, um, like, since the universe is, like, constantly going, like, contracting and then, like, expanding, whatever, there's, like, another sub-theory that basically says that, um, like, every time the universe, like, grows and, like, you know, Big Bang happens, whatever, um, like, the universes are the same. So it's, like, a, a universal time loop where, like, every time the universe expands, it's the same planets, the same solar systems, the same, you know, like everything the stars are the same everything is the exact same which would make sense because like you know all of like the matter that's like in the universe like it's the same like you're like recycling the cells right you're recycling like the elements and like you're recycling all of these things so that makes sense to me why it would be like a constant time loop of the exact same sort of universe which would also explain why we get deja vu because we're like you know, like, this has happened, you know what I'm saying, like, like, me telling you guys about the big bounce has happened already, like, billions and billions of years ago or whatever, and it's, like, constantly happening over and over and over again, just, like, forever, you know, in a billion years, I could be back here, back in this exact chair, talking to you guys about the big bounce, you know what I'm saying, it just makes sense to me, um, because it also explains deja vu, um, so, I think that that's what I believe in. Um, obviously, like, every time I read a space theory, I'm like, ooh, I believe in that. <laughs> I just, like, am con I'm so gullible. Like, I just literally believe anything. But I'm, I'm team big bounce. Are you guys, real question, are you guys team bang or team bounce? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag team bang or bounce. It's like, it's like Team Edward, Team Jacob. Team Edward is like Big Bang. Team Jacob is like Big Bounce, you know, because I'm Team Jacob and like people who are Big Bounce believers are like a little, a little notch higher than those, those below us. Um, but real question, you guys, Team Bang or Team Bounce? <sighs> yeah, yeah, I went over to this girl's house the other day and she, she asked me if I was Team Bang or Team Bounce. And that was Team Bounce. I got the hell out of there. Um, <laughs> if I... Okay. I'm going to promise you guys right now. If I... If this... When this podcast takes off and I just get super rich, like super famous, I'm like on like Jimmy Fallon. I'm like, I'm on like Kurt Connors podcast. I'm like, you know, yeah, I'm just... I'm in the inner circle, um, which is going to happen. Um, I'm waiting... 
come on, chop, chop, chop. <laughs> um, but basically, my f- if I if I ever like get big enough to do like merch, my first merch drop is gonna be Team Bang or Team Bounce. Um, <laughs> <coughs> bang or bounce, bang or bounce. That sounds like I feel like make an energy drink that's like bounce or something. Big bounce, big bounce energy. And then it would be like, um, and then it would be bag energy versus bounce, big bounce energy drinks. <laughs> like what? Okay. Bounce by, by Debbie Lovato. Do the ham and cheese. Do the chicken wang. Do you guys remember that? Chris, I know you remember that. Um, <laughs> team bang or team bounce. Um, what the fuck was I talking about before I started talking about this? Anyways. Let me know what you guys, what your guys' theories about are the universe, or maybe, like, my next episode podcast could be me, like, looking at different theories, and, like, I don't know, maybe I'll give them, like, I'll do, like, a tier list, a universe theory tier list. Um, so let me know, let me know what you guys think, if there are any theories that you think that I should, I should review, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, that's what I think, I, I, I'm a big bounce believer, which, like, ultimately goes in with the Big Bang, but I just, like, don't think that it stops there, you know? Because it's, like, the Big Bang still happens, you know? Like, the universe, like, still grows and stuff, but, like, it, it's, like, interconnected, but it's still different. Yeah, what was I thinking about? Or what was I talking about before? I think I was just talking about moving. Um, but anyway, yeah, so it's just crazy that, you know, the Big Bang happens, you know, over and over again. And I experienced this already. If I did it once, I can do it again. You know? I think that that's going to be my mindset from now on. You know? Me, billions of years ago, can do this. I can do it too. So, take that, universe. Take that. Um, But, um, but yeah. So, if you're, you know, stuck. If you're in a place in your life where you're stuck... Come to Banff, come to Canmore with stuff accommodation. Honestly, I'm pretty pumped. Um, my only problem is like, how am I gonna fit all my shit? How am I gonna fit all my shit? That was bars. <laughs> um, but yeah, cause like I I still wanna be like a little fashionista girl when I'm in when I'm in Banff when I'm in Canmore, but um, I don't really know how I'm gonna do that because. I'm like, like, I have so many clothes, you guys, like, so, like, you can kind of see in the video, I have a full clothing rack, and then I have a closet that's full, and I have a dresser that's also full, so I'm just like, I don't know what to do, um, I'll figure it out, like, I don't need to bring everything, because, like, there's a vintage store in Canmore that I know I'm gonna go to a lot, Not to be confused with the one in Banff, which I don't like. Because it's, like, the pictures that I saw from the one in Canmore. Ugh. I'm sick, you guys. I'm sorry. But anyways. Um, the one in Banff. There's, like, a vintage store there. And it's in this basement. This, like, grimy basement. And, like, they have so many things there. It's so cluttered. It's so, like, like, you can't walk without, like, touching clothes, you know? And I don't like it. Um, it's like so stressful being in there because there's so many things to look at. Um, but there's this one in Canmore and I saw pictures of it and it looks like, it looks better. So, um, I'll go there. I'll, I know that I'll find some stuff. I want to go to Valley Village and get more hoodies, like plain hoodies. Because most of my sweaters are like crew necks and those are like comfy and those are like cute. But they're not really like that, like as warm as a hoodie is. So I want to go. But because I don't have a car, it's, like, so much harder getting around everywhere. Um, so, my life is the worst. My Life Sucks by Scotty Sire. (laughs) You guys remember that guy? I used to be, like, obsessed with Scotty Sire. Like, not David Dobrik. I wasn't really, like, a Dobrik girl. But I was a Scotty Sire girl. And I think that he contributed a lot to my depression because he, like was like one of the first people to start like 
using self-deprecation humor. And I'm a firm believer that if you use self-deprecating humor, it makes you more depressed. Because if you're constantly talking about, like, how much you hate yourself and, like, oh, my life is the worst, my life sucks, like, oh, ha ha, ha ha, I want to die, ha ha, it's like, if you constantly say that, like, that's just negative affirmations. And, and it just contributes to a negative mind, negative soul. Um, and I'm not into that, but anyway, so... So, long story short, Scotty Sire is the reason why I'm depressed. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. That was a joke. Um, but anyway, I was, like, obsessed with Scotty Sire. And I would listen to Sad Song by Scotty Sire, like, all the time. And then a couple months ago, I was, like, I forgot about him. And then he, like, came up on my Explore feed on Instagram or something. And then I was, like, oh, I, I like, want to rewatch that video and, like, see if it's still, like, such a banger. Um... I literally know the lyrics. Like, I know every single lyric to that song. Um, and I I watch it again and again. It's just like... It's like... Uh, since when did we make depression, like, a relatable thing? Or it's like... Not necessarily, like, relatable, but relatable in, like, a way that's, like, kind of weird. Like... I don't know. Because it's, it's just like... It seems like you're just profiting off of your mental illness for views, you know? Or, like, you're, you're just, like, exploiting yourself, almost. It's kind of weird, or, like, you're exploiting, like, your mental illness, and you're kind of, like, highlighting, like, those parts just to, like, appeal to your audience. Like, it's a little weird to me. Um, you know? And it's, like, that's kind of what his fan base is based off of, is, like, being depressed. And I don't think that that's, like, really that good. And I don't think it's healthy. Um, especially, like, if you're if you're actually struggling with it, it's like, I don't really think that's a healthy coping mechanism. Um, but yeah, so I, I used to be a Scotty Sire girl. Now I'm not. Um, I don't really know if he still makes like the same kind of like sad humor videos. Um, I'm assuming yes. I haven't heard anything else that's, that says otherwise, but, um, but yeah, I know all the lyrics to sad song. I got a problem, I'm always so sad. The little things get me pissed off or mad. My life's pretty good, no, I don't have a bet, so it's hard to explain all these feelings I have. I, <laughs> I won't give you guys, uh, I'll just leave it there. I'll leave that little teaser there for you. I just banged my, my septum on my mic. I wonder if you guys heard that. Um, like, I keep going on these tangents. <laughs> um, but I guess like that, that's pretty much like all I had to say about moving, you know? Um, let's see what else, what else is going on in my life? Oh my god, okay. So I have been a Willow Smith stan this week, and last week, and the week before, and the year before. But she released her, her album Coping Mechanism. Oh my god, like, every single song is such a banger. Like, it's different when I'm listening to music in the car, because I want to, like, listen to things that I can, like, sing, you know? Like, I... I tend to like not listen to newer music when I when I had my car because I like to like sing out loud when I'm in the car and like I like to like scream lyrics in the car and stuff but now that it's like um like I bought airpods because my headphones broke um so I bought airpods and like I was in I was on the bus and I was like listening to to like Will Smith's album to like the the songs that I like didn't know as well and, like, every song is a banger because when I'm on the bus, it's, like, I can actually, like, listen to the lyrics and, like, you know, like, think about it. Um, because I can't, like, sing out loud on the bus. I mean, I guess I could, but, um, out of respect for everyone else because, like, they would just be blown away by my voice, you know. Um, I gotta, I gotta keep that, keep that part of me secret for now. Um, but yeah, so I was listening to, to all of the songs on the bus. Like, I've, I've pretty much only been listening to, like... Curious, Furious, um, Falling Endlessly, maybe it's my fault, like, the first half of her album, but I've been listening to the second half too, and it's literally just as good. That album is so good, like, every song is just a banger. I love Will Smith, um, she's so cool, and she has my heart, so I hope that she goes on tour, I hope she comes to Vancouver or Calgary or somewhere cool that I can go on a trip, maybe I'll go back to Toronto, maybe Montreal, who knows, but, um, when she comes to Canada, I will be there. Maybe I'll get my passport and I'll go to the States to see her. Um, but I need to get that done first, so. 
Um, I like literally need to get my passport shit figured out ASAP. Um, but yeah. So, so those are my music. I, I, in like episode three of this podcast, I was like, I'm going to do a weekly song update with you guys. And I'm going to say what songs I like at the moment every week. And then I did that like once and then I never did it again. And like every time I would record, I would like think about it. I'd be like, oh yeah, I have to like talk about my favorite songs. And then I would forget when I was filming. Um, but anyway, my favorite song right now by Will Smith, I think is You're a Stranger from her album. I've also been listening to lots of like, I've just been listening to like lots of rock recently. Um, especially soft, like softer rock. I've been listening to Violent Femmes. So that's a really good band as well. Um, Sweet Child of Mine is like still one of my favorite songs of all time. It's been like that for a couple of years, but um, it's like I have like favorite songs that are like phases, not phases, but it's like I have favorite songs that are like, I know they're not going to be my favorite song forever, you know, like Will Smith's album. I know that like I'm going to listen to it too often, then I'm going to get sick of it. And then like I will, I'll forget about it for like a year. And then like next year I'll rediscover it and like the cycle continues, you know, but then there's like these like little songs here and there um that just like stay my favorite song for like years and years because i don't listen to them very often one of those songs is sweet child of mine by guns and roses i like rediscover that song like every like couple months or something and then i'll like listen to it a couple times and i'm just like this is such a good song that song santa ray by sublime also one of my favorite songs of all time um yeah so so that's that's been my music my music recently um let's see what else i i got this sweater if you're listening to just the audio um go to the youtube for just a second so you can look at my sweater um it's like so ugly i'm i've been into like knit sweaters recently because they're like cozy and they're warm you know so i went to value village like a couple months ago i've had this for no i've had this for probably like one month and I went to Valley Village and I saw this sweater and I was like, oh my god, this is so cute because it's like a, a nice little like navy pink white little wave pattern. And I didn't know that it only went up to like your forearm. Like it's a forearm length sweater. It's not like a full length. And I didn't know that when I got it. And then I, I brought it home and I tried it on and I was like, oh my god, I look like a fucking cat lady. Like, like, <laughs> I kind of like it though. I kind of like the vibe of um of this like cat lady sweater like i don't know it's just like it's cozy it's cute um carissa hates it but she hates everything that i do so so shout out carissa again i <laughs> shout her out every single podcast um but um but yeah that's pretty much pretty much all that's been happening in my life oh i went to i went to toronto i haven't even talked about that um my last week episode was with my dad when i went to see him and then um, me and Carissa and our other friend Taryn went to Toronto to see Remy Wolf in concert. Oh my god, you guys. Remy Wolf is such a good performer. Like, she has so much stage presence. And, like, everyone there... Like, you, you know those videos of Steve Lacey um, at his concerts and, like, no one knows the lyrics there? I'm going to talk about that in a second. But, um, like, no one at the Remy concert was like that. Like, they knew every single word, every single syllable to all of her songs. And, like, it was just such a good vibe. Um, so that was really fun. But in terms of the Steve Lacey videos, ugh, like, those piss me off. Like, you're telling me that you spent, like, Steve Lacey tickets are expensive as fuck. Like, they're, like, in the hundreds of dollars. You're telling me that you spent hundreds of dollars to go and watch, um, a performer perform one song that's on TikTok that you like, you know? And it's, like, that video where they're, like, I wish I knew... I wish I knew you wanted me, you know? And it's like, I just don't get it because if you like that song on TikTok, don't you add it to your playlist? Don't you listen to it? Like, you would know the lyrics if you actually like that song. It just, like, baffles me that, like, people are like that. Like, how do you not go to a concert and know every single song of the artist? You know what I'm saying? Because it's, like, it's fun to, like, be in that environment. Even if you, like... You know, like, let's say, like, you were like, oh, I guess I'll go see Steve Lacey or whatever. Like, I'm not doing anything else. Like, I would, li I would like, study and I would listen to his music beforehand. You know what I'm saying? 
it's all just it's just like like oh my god if I was Steve Lacey I literally would like want to die <clears throat> because that would like piss me off so much if people only knew like the chorus of my song you know what I'm saying that's like so horrible and then there's also that like the videos of the fan like there's so many Steve Lacey concert videos that are like circulating right now there's the one where like that girl the little girl's like say hi to my mom and she's like and then Steve Lacey's like can you be quiet please <laughs> like that's funny and like props to Steve Lacey for responding that way but I'm like I don't understand like why people like <sighs> you're a child like the the person in the video sounded young you know and it's like Steve Lacey I feel like I feel kind of bad for him because I feel like he's gaining like a younger audience because of TikTok and like because of songs that go viral you know because like young people use TikTok like really young people I, I'm talking like 10 12 you know but I don't think like Steve Lacey he has like a like a like a demographic of like my age you know or like you know like 20s or something you know like older older like young adults kind of and it's like oh my god that would piss me off if there were like children at my concert like sorry no but then it's like you can't really make it like 19 plus because like then you're gonna lose a lot of people you know i don't know i just like i feel really bad for him in that way too because it's like you don't really have any control over you know what your demographic is and like i understand that but i feel like tiktok is kind of like ruining artists in that way because like before TikTok, like, Steve Lacey was still, like, a huge artist. Like, he's, like, like one of the biggest artists in the world, you know? Um, so it's just, like, it's it's really sad to see. To see that happen. Um, and then there's that video of, like, the girl throwing a camera at him. And then he, like, throws that girl's phone and then, like, leaves. Because it was, like, the end of his set or something. But, like, oh, that would piss me off, like... Shout out to Steve Lacey for dealing with all this shit. You don't deserve that, King. Um, but it's like, why would you only go to see the one song? Or, like, to only, like, listen to the chorus? Like, it doesn't make sense. And it's like, that song? Come on. Like, Steve Lacey has so many songs. So many, like, bangers of songs. You know what I'm saying? Ugh. But, um, but yeah. I don't know. I just, I feel bad for him. Poor Steve Lacey. Um, there's one other video. Yeah. The one where he's like choking on smoke. <laughs> that one was funny. But it's like, why would, why would like the audience keep singing? And like, why was it? Like, he's literally choking on the, the fog machine. But yeah. So. I don't know. If I was like an artist. And children showed up to my show. Or they didn't know every single lyric. Like, because I'm, I'm just picturing like the vibes at Remy Wolf when I went and like everyone like knew all the words to the songs it was just so much fun screaming the lyrics with like all of these people and like I like that's what I would want at Steve Lacey too you know cuz like Steve Lacey or like Frank Ocean that's what I would want or like any concert honestly but I don't know how how people go to the concert and like only know the chorus like that's literally so embarrassing for the the people that were in there Cause it's like, it wasn't even like, oh, half the people stopped singing. It was like, everyone stopped singing. Like, my video stopped, but anyway. Everyone stopped singing in that video. It wasn't even just like, it was like a one-time thing, you know? Or, not a one-time thing. I don't know why I said that. But it wasn't even like, it was just like half the people or like some people stopped singing, you know? It just got quieter. It was like crickets in there, you know? Like, no one knew the lyrics and like, oh my god. Oh my god, I can't. I'm getting, like, riled up. It's 9 a.m. Like, I should not be this mad. <laughs> um, but, but yeah. I don't know how Steve Lacey can deal with that. Um, but, but yeah. If I went to a Steve Lacey concert, you know, I'd be, I'd be singing my heart out, um, to everything. Every single word. And I would, I would kill any child that got in my way. Um, but yeah. Um, sorry. I wish I knew, I wish I knew you want me. Um, but yeah, so I, um, 
it's how I'll, I'll talk about Halloween for a bit and then I'll, I'll sign off but um it's Halloween soon tomorrow it's Halloween by the time I upload this it'll be after Halloween it'll be Christmas time after I upload this but um yeah it's it's Halloween uh, it's just around the corner and I have no plans um, my costume is supposed to be Emma Stone from Easy A slay of a costume and guess what? I don't have anywhere to wear it. <coughs> I sound like I'm gonna cry. I am. I'm very emotional when I when I'm thinking about this, you know. But um, yeah, I don't have anywhere to wear my costume to. Like I have work tomorrow until like four. But like after that, like Paris and I talked about hanging out and like going to this thing at at like the mall. But I'm like, do I want to go to the mall for Halloween? Like no. I wish I I wish I had like party college friends that could like bring me to parties but it's okay because i'll be in camera soon and then i'll like go clubbing like literally every day <laughs> um but i'm not gonna stop the podcast when i move it's like i'm still gonna i'm still gonna do it um i just like i like having a place where i can vent you know um where i could talk about the big big bounce you know um but yeah, so, um, I was, I was gonna do, like, a thing that's, like, oh, if, if you're doing something for Halloween, let me know, but guess what, when I upload this, it's gonna be, like, November 2nd or November 1st or something, um, but I, I also work at, like, 8.30 in the morning, November 1st, so I'm not gonna do, like, too much partying, um, but it's also hard because it's gonna be, like, pouring rain, like, you can't do anything. If it was, like, nice and sunny outside, like, at least I could, I don't know, like, go downtown Vancouver or something and, like, I don't know, go, do something. Go walk around. At least that'd be cooler than, like, staying, like, where around, like, the area that I live in. But, no. I'm also 18, I'm not legal here, so can't even, like, go clubbing or something. Which would be fun. Um, and you can't even go to Fright Nights because you can't dress up. Which is, like, so lame. For my people who aren't from Vancouver, Friday Nights is, like, it's kind of like a haunted house, I think. I've never been. But it's just, like, a like a Halloween event that is ha that happens at, um, like, Playland, like, the amusement park that's here. And it's, like, why would I even go to a Halloween event if I can't dress up, you know? But, anyway, so this Halloween is kind of mid. <laughs> um... But yeah, hopefully I'll find something. It's okay. I'll, I'll hang out with Paris. We'll have a grand old time. Um, what else is happening? A week from today, I get to see Curtis Connor. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's coming to Vancouver. And me and Paris are going. Um, and that's the day after Paris' birthday. So Paris' birthday is in six days. Curtis Connor's in seven days. Um, so it's going to be a good week, you know? Um... But yeah, it's a little bit of a shorter episode than normal, but I pretty much ran out of things that I have to say. Um, so let me know if you're a hashtag team, team bang or team bounce. Um, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your morning. I hope you guys, I hope you guys have a good Halloween. Stay safe. Um, <laughs> it's like I'm uploading this after Halloween, like <laughs> whatever. Anyways. Um, but yeah, so get yourself a little London fog and I hope you guys have a, have a great day. So, um, I'm signing off. I, I, one more thing. I was debating what to call you guys. And then I was like, maybe I'll call you guys my little coffee pods because it's like the, the morning coffee pod, but I'm also anti Keurig. So I don't really know what to call you guys. Um, I'll call you guys my little fuckers. <laughs> um, but let me know. Maybe like my my coffee beans. That's like so cringe. Like I want something funny. Um, but yeah, I'm anti Keurig, so I don't wanna I don't wanna call you guys my coffee pods. So let me know if you have a little if you have an idea of what I can call my fans, um, my diehard fans. But yeah, so have a good day. Love you guys and peace out.